Welcome to the Sigma product knowledge session. Today we're going to be covering the various types of undercarriage and their components. On this photograph you can see the general layout of an undercarriage. You've got the um, track plates around the outside which are the bits that sit on the ground, the chains which the track plates are bolted to, the final drive which is the round drum at the left hand side which has got the teeth on it which then lock into the chain. On the top those two little wheels are the upper rollers. On the bottom you can see there's eight wheels down there which carry the weight of the excavator onto the chain and they're called the bottom rollers. And at the right you can't really see it but there's another wheel in there which carries the front of the chain and that's called the front idler. Undercarriages, steel undercarriages are used on excavators on track loading shovels, on bulldozers to give extra stability and traction to the machine for instance where wheels, rubber wheels might not give enough stability or traction they then move to steel um, tracks. They're also used on pavers to give traction. This is an example of a paver track, it's a steel track with rubber pads on this is an, another example of a steel trap with rubber pads, this time it's on an excavator. They'll typically use this from 8 tons up to about 13. Below 8 tons they use this type which is a rubber track. It's a one piece rubber moulding or extrusion with steel inserts. Those steel inserts then lock onto the undercarriage in the same way that a steel undercarriage does. Um, they're quite cheap easy to replace and they're much simpler than a full steel undercarriage. This is the um, basic layout of an, the upper part of a bulldozer undercarriage. You've got the final drive which is the large yellow drum in the center. This holds the um, gears and the hydraulic drive um, around the edge of the final drive you've got the sprocket. The sprocket then locks into the chain, the inside of the chain. The chain holds the track plates and the track plates then engage with the ground. This again is the final drive around the right hand side you can see the sprocket. The sprocket then locks into the chain and it grips on the bushes. This is the close up of the sprocket. The sprocket then links in with these um, pins here. The pins actually run through the middle of these little sleeves you can see. The sleeves are called bushes and the bushes take the weight. You can just see there on the bottom of the bush where the teeth on the sprocket have started to wear them. And that's a typical example of how they wear. Once they're half worn you then turn them around and you get another few months wear out of them. This is a close-up of the bottom part of an undercarriage. You can see how the track plates lie flat. They fit onto the chain. The chain then is basically the skeleton of the undercarriage. Upper rollers supporting the chain. This is a photograph of the side of the upper roller. Where the chain rubs on the upper roller it'll wear and so you'll be able to see how worn the rollers are. If they're worn they'll curve like the left hand one there and more so and if they're not so worn they'll be flatter a bit like where you can see the right hand side of that roller. This wheel here is the front idler. It basically takes the carries the front of the chain. It does not give a drive and this is the this is the idler and to the left of the idler you can see the tensioner which is like a pressurized large hydraulic ram which makes sure that as the chain and the undercarriage wear and get a bit slack that tension tensioner you can pressurize it up with hydraulic fluid and it'll just keep the tracks tight. This is a close up of the track plate. Those grips sticking up are called grousers. 
and the track plate is bolted to the chain with those bolt heads you can just see there. This is the undercarriage frame. It is attached to the body, the yellow part of the excavator, by the slew ring. The slew ring is that um, piece in between with the bolts all the way around and that gives the rotary turn to the excavator. This is the undercarriage on a bulldozer. This is a Komatsu dozer. It does not have the high drive, the triangular tracks that Caterpillar use. It's just got the more of like an excavator track. Now this is an EX dozer, a D65 EX. It weighs about 18-19 tons. The EX means that it is not LGP, which is low ground pressure, which is a wide track designed for softer soil or softer environment. Um, this EX machine will be typically used for more quarry work or harder soil where it does not need the wider tracks. This is a picture of a D65, the same machine, but with the wider tracks you can see how the tracks protrude from the, the edge of the body. So this is LGP, it's the PX model, D65 PX. This is the same size machine as the D6M, which is about 18 or 19 tons, about the same. Again, it's LGP, again you can see the tracks protrude from the side of the body. This is again just another photograph of a excavator. You can see the final driver sprocket, the chains, the track plates, the upper rollers, the lower rollers, the idlers. Thanks for listening. <laughs>